Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Tom Devine. I'm with AV Pro Edge, and today we get to talk about whoop, this cool product. Uh, it's a nine output, one input video wall processor that does all the work for you and is really, really fun to set up. It's called the Fresco Cap 9. Um, some of you may be familiar with the Cap 4. This is kind of like the bigger brother version of that. And we're going to open up a brand new box that we have. They are in stock. So you guys can put your orders in today for this video wall processor. Um, but today we're going to just go over training. We're going to um, look at the ins and outs of the product, where you can use it, why you should use it, when you should use it. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. Um, I'm going to be showing a PowerPoint presentation, um, but I figured before we get, uh, or you know, kind of in the middle of it, we'll do an actual unboxing of the video, or excuse me, of the product um, before we get all the way through. So then you guys can see actually what you'd be getting when you order it, and um, we can look at some of the different applications. So without further ado, I'm going to start out here, but know that you have a go to webinar control panel, just as long as you haven't called from a phone. And on there, there is a questions tab. So I have the questions tab right here um, open. I'm looking at it. If you guys have any questions at all during this entire training, I'll be able to see it and then I can just address it right away with you guys. Um, and if you guys have trouble hearing me or you have any problems, make sure you just put that in the questions box. Um, that's going to be where you're going to be able to uh, communicate with me during this presentation. If you did want to look at more information while I'm kind of going over this, go to avproedge.com, go to the video walls, and you'd be able to see the um, the video wall processor. For our Pro AV team, go to avprotech.com, and then you'll be able to see the uh, Cap9 there. So let's uh, get into the PowerPoint. And, and thanks once again, guys, for joining us. So I'm going to share in here. All right. I think you guys can see the PowerPoint. If you're not able to see the PowerPoint, just let me know, and then we can kind of um, go through it. But this is what you're looking at here is the Fresco Cap 9. Uh, the part number is AC-Fresco-Cap-9. It's 18 gigabit, 4K60, 444 video wall processor, and it can process three by three video walls, or it could process two, two by two video walls, any sort of video wall manner that you would uh, include up to nine screens. It is able to be cascaded for even larger um, than a three by three. You can even go all the way up until an eight by eight by combining these products uh, and cascading through. Perfect, sorry about that guys. All right, so um, what makes this special and what are you looking at here? So as I said, this has one input, so any HDMI input that can be put into this into this uh, unit and it can be displayed on a nine panel uh, video wall. It has nine HDMI outputs that would map into the nine panels of a perfect three by three video wall. It comes in a three by three out of the box so that if you do plug it in, boom, you um, put a source to it and you hook it up to nine TVs in a, in a, a three by three configuration, you're going to have a video wall that's up and running. Um, it does have 18 gigabit per second bandwidth support. And um, for those who don't know why that's important, is a lot of times you may find content when you play HDR, uh, 4K, or Dolby Vision content, or anything that is at a higher frame rate, like gaming or um, you know sports. You would be able to exceed the normal bandwidth limits of a lot of different um, audio video distribution equipment out there, which is at about a 10 gigabit per second max bandwidth but ours we built our we took that 10 um gigabit per second pipeline and we opened up for the full hdmi 2.0 spec which is 18 gigabits per second it's actually 17.89 but we just um, refer to it as 18 gigabits per second now in that 18 gigabits per second we are sending hdr metadata we're sending audio we're sending video and we can even send dolby vision uh, metadata so we can actually send a Dolby Vision screen. That means you are going to be able to take um, off the market 
panels that are not built for a video wall and you're going to just be able to put into any hdmi port if it handles dolby vision you're going to be able to split a dolby vision signal into nine different individual signals and play them on a large video wall it's really really a, a, a cool feature for this product we don't know of any other video wall processors that are able to handle that dolby vision metadata and also it allows you to stand apart because now you get to use those billions and billions and billions of extra colors that dolby has been Dolby scientists have been so nice to uh, you know uh, engineer for us into our TVs um, this also has uh, control options so that if you it, what you the only time that you would really need to control this unit because it is just one in nine out is going to be to set up the video wall maybe you need to configure it to be in a different um, less traditional manner that's no problem you can configure your video wall however you want if you need to flip your screen you're able to do that that's all in our control software and we'll, we'll we will look at our control software uh, in this presentation so now what you're doing is we're just looking directly at what the cap 9 is um, we will open it up um, in a second here so this is you know you connect this is how you set up your cap 9 you see it here it's on the right you see you get your nice picture of the back nice picture of the front you can see the silk print kind of letting you know some guidelines on how to manage edid and how to manage cascading and how to manage more than one multi, uh, video wall at a time and what you can um, do then is you just connect this to either usb rs232 or lan then you can connect to the pc software you measure and you enter all your um measurements on your bezel you you know like right here is going to be your bezel so you measure this if i was going to use this video wall i'd measure this amount and we can um mathematically uh make sure that the the image if you have a diagonal screen that's going across two images are going to match up and we can do that by bezel compensation measuring it with the control software once you have all your measurements in there you know exactly how big the tvs are you know exactly how big the bezels are you hit generate video wall and voila you have yourself an extremely dynamic high um, contrast with HDR, high dynamic range, and you have Dolby Vision colors all going through this video wall. It's going to be a huge wow factor for any of your customers. And we'll talk about why this video wall processor is a little different than what a lot of people think about when they talk about setting up a video wall. Um, because we normally have to think about video wall panels and um, having the, the panel actually does the video wall, and that can be an extremely expensive endeavor. This way is a way that integrators can give that wow factor an even better video wall than the commercial grade video wall panels using a consumer grade Dolby Vision panel, and then you can build this really magnificent thing. So before we get too far into it, let's just open up the box and take a look here. So open it up, you got this box. I have, uh, you know, there's some, it's nice and packed with foam. We have a little cover on it. This is gonna be your little box. I'm sure we're gonna have, you know, our power supply and our different connectors. You have your little, uh, you know, audio breakout and ground in and uh, uh, um, control Phoenix uh, or Molex or Phoenix connectors right there. And then you have your power supply. Um, and then out of the box, it comes like this. So then we'll move this here and we'll take these ends off. And then we have a little tape job. I try to be careful because, you know, this is going to go be stock into our lab and they're going to have to use this. Our lab's going to have to use it. It's going to go out for, try to be used and tested, I'm sure, for a long time. So I'll try not to rip this too much. Okay, so this is the unit that we're talking about. As you can see, it's about the size of just an 8x8 matrix switcher. Um, I think it is the exact size of an 8x8 matrix switcher. You're going to have a, a perfect 19-inch uh, rack unit right on the front, and then on the back, you're going to see that you have your HDMI in, your HDMI loop out right in the middle, and then you have um, one through nine outputs, and that's going to be for your if you split a video wall, you know, three on top, three in the middle, three on the bottom, that's going to be your classic three by three video wall. Then you have an audio out. So if you do need to go to a local AVR or some sort of audio system, you're able to actually pull the sources audio, de-embed it right here and get it out. With the HDMI loop out, you could just get the audio right from the loop out as well. But the loop out also allows you to add more 
and then you can cascade into additional units. Um, you, as you can see, we got power here, you have your different control features, and, and that's it. What is nice is, you know, as I showed you before, is you do get some nice instructions for EDID um, right here, and then cascading right here. And it kind of just gives you a breakdown of how you would work with uh, um, this product, which it, it's, as you can see, you order this product, you get what you get. It is a, uh, a video wall processor and the power to use it. And um, that's all you need in order to do massively uh, successful, massively impactful video walls, which is which is really cool. Um, I see a question from James, and thank you, James. He said, what would the loop out be used for? So I did kind of cover that really quickly, but let me kind of like explain it a little bit more. So if you have uh, want to make a four by four video wall, you know, you have four, 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 you have 16 panels. Well, you could put two of these on top and then you can configure in the software how to do a full four by four. But because you want both of those units to have the same content, what you do is you come in with your source on the HDMI in, it would loop out to the second one. Now you can make an even bigger video wall. And, and Huawei chips are illegal in the United States, um, you know, because they had some different things from uh, China that were trying to, um, you know, invade our privacy and all of this. Well, it turns out that a lot of large scale video wall processors, they actually used those chips. Well, we are not using those chips in the Fresco 4. We're using our own chips that are, you know, are, are completely legal to use and safe and have no, none of that tampering. Um, so if you were having trouble finding video wall processors on a large scale from some of those um, people that are having to pull their units and get, the, get rid of those chips and start from scratch on a new chip base, well, you can just move over here and uh, the Fresco uh, Cap 9 can actually do that for you. Um, so let's get into here. We'll show our presentation again. Let me know if um, you don't have a, or if you can't see it. Um, before I, we go all the way in that loop out, though, a lot of times a video wall is not going to have sound. It's just going to be video. A lot of commercial video wall panels, they just have video. But it, we are in an area that, you know, people can put this in a home. It shows Dolby Vision. This could be your big impact in your garage, in your home theater, in your main space. Um, this could also, though, fit perfect for retail, bars, restaurants. And maybe you do want the audio to come out of here. Maybe you're at a, you know, I'm a big pinball and arcade guy. So if I go, um, when the COVID's all over, I get back to the arcade and pinball machines. A lot of times they have a cool 80s movie showing and we want to all hear the, the, um, the um, dialogue from that movie. Well, what you could do is you could take on this little port right here, you could take that HDMI out and then you could loop it out to an AVR, a preamp, anything that would then go to a distributed audio system. So you could show a video wall, have the source plug directly into this unit and still be sending audio all, all the way around uh, an installation throughout different zones, whatever you wanted to do. So that's some ways that you can use that loop out. Um, we have another question from uh, Jalen. He says, how easily do the feet come off? Oh, so easily. Um, they are just a little screw right here. We can just do it for you. Um, you know, because most of the time this will be racked, it, it, but, uh, but sometimes it doesn't go into a full rack. You may have this under the video wall. It just has a little Phillips head and it just can screw off as simple as that. So that's how you take it off. So, so extremely easy there, uh, Jalen. Now let's look at, we got a couple more questions in here. This is great. Thank you guys for the um, questions. If sent HDC protected content doesn't have the keys to allow the content to be sent to nine panels in a three by three, even more so, it has the keys to cascade on through. So there's actually a reamplifier in, in here and a, um, you know, what it does is it actually takes those keys and reamplifies it to every single one. So yes, this does have HDCP 2.0 compatible. So anything 1.4, any 4K HDC content, any video games, any movies, any TV, no problem. You can turn that into a video wall with this. Now that doesn't come, that isn't, you know, just standard for a lot of things. And that's why the David's asking that question is because 
HDCB content on a video wall, you have to pay more for that. Every single one of these, we of course have to send money to HDCP, give them money for each one of the ports that can handle it. Um, but we do that because we know that our customers want the best of the best. If you're going for a Dolby Vision video wall, you're not looking for a subpar picture. You're looking for the best of the best. And so that is why we have to include those HDCP keys even for cascading. A great question, David. Uh, Jess Hopkins, uh, this is a great innovation to have your own chipset. Very cool. And, and I agree. That's It took us a little while to get this out. And we've actually had the Cat 4 as the jumper. That's where our engineers started. It's a smaller four two by two video wall, but it's not able to do Dolby Vision. So by using our own chipsets, our engineers are constantly being able to increase and be get better and better and um, you know manipulate them more and more in order for us to push the best signals that you can possibly get out of audio video equipment today. And and that is why we have HCCP. Um, you know. Um, keys in here for cascading that is why we use our own engineers that's why we use our own fvga chipsets um, that are engineered and written by ourselves um, because we also want to give somebody give people the option to get the best of the best a lot of times a video wall may be good enough but for AV Pro Edge, we come from a background in calibration. You need to have every single image looking exactly the same. They need to switch exactly the same. They need to, um, your customer has to be wowed and impacted by every image that goes through there. And that's why we want to send HDR metadata. That's why we want to send Dolby Vision. That's why we want to send 4K 18 gigabits per second. And we do it with this, uh, this really cool switch. So, or switch, excuse me, uh, video wall processor. So let me go a little bit into it here. Um, as you can see here, that's John Tumbleson at the bottom. He said, this, you know, he has the famous quote is the biggest challenge of setting up a, a fresco video wall is hanging the physical panels. Uh, John is our head of uh, application engineering. He's a great asset for our team at AV Pro. He's the 99th employee, employee at Apple is his claim to fame. And he knows his stuff. He's been writing control programs, handling video wall manipulation between um, you know, multi-view and uh, single view for his entire career. So um, he is the one who has built this, built the control system, and um, that you can really tell that the dedication went into it uh, to make sure that you are getting the best of the best. So this is going to be your connection diagram. This is how you set it up. This is what we're talking about, guys. You got HDMI source going in. You could connect your control processor to do a few different things. That's initially for setup. Don't need that after it's going. You could have your AVR coming out of your um, audio de-embedding, and then you have an HDMI run. One cable for one TV, setting up a perfect three by three video wall. Of course, in this, you know, as you guys can see, there's spaces in here, but um, at, on a video wall, you would you would of course eliminate all those spaces. We'd make this one image. So I don't. Before we get too far into that, I want to just talk about some of the the things that I've talked about. I have I have touched on them, but we want to kind of show that this is why this is what makes this video wall different from other ones. Plug and play, without any setup, you can just plug it in and it's spinning out a video wall. It has built-in scaling. But not just like built-in scaling on that input, it has built-in scaling on every single one of the outputs. So you can take, you know, your 720p content and play it at 4K. You can play it 4K on nine individual 4K images, making sure that that image that you are sending through, even if it isn't optimized, we can optimize it as much as possible. We all know that upscaling um, can only go so far. But if you do send 4K 60, 444 content from the newest source, and then you have some legacy displays, maybe a video wall that has already been hung uh, that only does 1080p, no problem. We can downscale every single one of the outputs to fit with any of the legacy equipment, whether it be sources or sinks. And then audio de-embedding works with the, as we talked about early, um, highly flexible panel configurations. Now we've only been really talking about the three by three, but with the control software, you could have it set up. So you're doing um, you know, a big long line, you could have different, uh, screens all around. You could build it for custom content, however you wanted it to go in different shapes, um, however you wanted to uh, configure it, you can. And then Dolby Vision and HDR is really where the performance stands out. I've got a few more questions coming in, so let's 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 talk about some of those. Did you say that audio was passed through the HDMI loop out? I sure did, uh, Jalen, and that's going to be one of the big parts. You can take it out of your de-embedded audio, but 
do we know anything about de-embedded audio when you only have those uh, uh, five pins like that? That's not going to give you Dolby Atmos. That's not going to give you DTSX. It's not going to give you, you know, digital um, plus all of the bit stream, the really, you know, 30 channels or 20 channels of audio because you're not going to be able to get that from that de-embedded audio. But where you can get that, Jalen, is from that HDMI loop out. So you could have this be in a home theater showing Dolby Vision, it's playing Dolby Atmos out of that HDMI loop out going directly into your AVR that's set up with, um, you know, four Dolby Atmos connected to all the speakers and you have yourself quite the um, <laughs> setup there. So let's see, um, we got, uh, any plans for an HD base T fresco at this time? No, I mean, if these sales go off the roof and there's a reason for it, we definitely would. We do feel that you can kind of put the, um, the video wall processor pretty close to the video wall. A lot of times, Andrew, but if we see that there's a need, uh, that's a, that's, it, it's a great, it's a great feature. If we could have HD base T outputs, it is going to increase the cost. We have to use now valence chips into each one of the outputs. So that's kind of where some things were, where we have chosen not to going off from the start but as we grow the line it's definitely something that could happen now to be heard um andrew and everybody else i want you guys to know if you go to the just the contact us section on av pro edge or avprotech.com you would be able to find something that's product ideas it's kind of like our cauldron that we allow integrators and our distributors and our reps and our end users to give us ideas and um, we will then try to see if we get enough similar ideas or we think it's a good one that we think we can put to market we will make them and if you're the person who came up with the idea you get yourself uh, a, a pretty cool package um, but yeah great question uh, Jalen had another one is there audio latency as it's passed through the loop out no zero audio latency when we test I mean, I shouldn't say zero, as close to zero as you can get, sub 20 milliseconds of audio latency. Of course, you may know we, our sister company is Meridio. We have a Dolby um, audio testing device called the seven generator. We test latency. Um, we test latency for tons of manufacturers all around the world, TV manufacturers, AVR manufacturers with our, equi our equipment. So yes, we've definitely taken latency into a factor, but the latency um, that we have is it is immediate loop out. So it doesn't go through any processing at all, giving you sub 20 milliseconds, even on long runs. And sub 20 milliseconds for people who don't know audio, you won't be able to distinguish. Yes, and you, if you are needing to go long runs, um, our good partner, Patrick, um, he mentioned that if you wanted HD base T, that's no problem. Maybe we could get in the future, but for right now, that doesn't hinder what you're doing because we have extremely long AOC cables. Uh, these are active optical HDMI cables that now go up to even 100 meters. So you can, distance should not be an issue with HDMI if you need it. Um, we do also have an extensive set of HDMI extenders. All right. Thanks for those questions, guys, and keep them coming. I really appreciate it. Then I know, you know, we're, we're addressing what you guys need to be addressed. So this is um, kind of a, I, we just want to show you a unique way that you could use this video wall processor. Now, maybe you're familiar with our Cloud9. It's a nine input, nine output, HD base T um, matrix switcher that you can cascade so that you can have even more outputs. Well, it does have video wall capabilities by you taking each one of these nine outputs and connecting them to TV. So here's your nine input um, HD base T video wall receiver right there. But that takes up a lot of space and you know, if you want to switch into um, other sources, you have you know eight other images around or uh, zones around and you wanna have one video wall zone. Now you can add this, the Cap9 to the Cloud9 and now you get, you utilize the Cap9's multi view feature. What that does is on one screen, it shows nine individual sources. So you could watch nine football games, nine, you know, um, movies, nine, you know, security camera feeds all on one image. With the Cap9 and the Cloud9 together, now we take that nine images that are on one screen and we can pull it out and we can have a three by three video while with an individual image on each one of the screens but then with a click of a switch from your control system or on, from touching the front of the uh, cloud nine 
boom, you can take that and you can play one image across the entire video wall. So as you can see uh, in this diagram, you can have all this individual um, images going to each one of the TVs, but then with a click of a switch, it would show this image right here at the bottom. And as you can see, if you're wondering where we get those pictures, those are the beautiful ISF test patterns um, that are from the Imaging Science Foundation. Uh, so those are always fun to play with. Um, so really just I'll, just showing some unique ways that we can do this. Um, so because it has an H one HDMI input, you can just add a video wall to any system, whether it be a matrix switcher, a point to point, a um, going through it, it, just one zone of a 16 by 16 matrix switcher. It doesn't matter because it has that one HDMI signal. You plug that HDMI signal and whatever it gets, it's going to put uh, it's going to um, play that signal. So if you're doing switching through a matrix switcher, you're doing um, different things before it gets to the uh, cap nine, that's going to allow you to really add a wow feature, add that that thing that blows your customer away. Wow, that's really cool. I have these eight zones. And then you show them the video wall zone. You're like, holy smokes, a video wall? Because guys, let's be honest. If you walk into a room, no matter who you are, if it has a video wall, your eyes go to it. It's a wow factor. It brings people to it. People want to look at it. And that's why um, you want to you know, sell these. Uh, but on the other hand, you go, well, I could always just get nine commercial video wall panels and then I can may have my, uh, you know, I, that's that's how I sell video walls. Well, commercial video wall panels are extremely expensive and you have to daisy chain them together. They don't, aren't going to have HDR and Dolby Vision capabilities and you're gonna pay paying way too much money for them. With a Fresco Cap 9, you could go and get that $500, that $400 display you could get nine of them, find the one with the smallest bezel, and you can set up a video wall for a fraction of the cost of a traditional video wall. And this video wall will probably look better with the HDR and Dolby Vision Spear, uh, um, excuse me, metadata that's coming through. So you have control to set it up on however you want. You have the best imaging coming through. You can use any panels you want. It does not have to have video wall capabilities and you're able to process it with this fresco. This is going to just kind of show you how you can do a little bit of a custom setup. Um, you have, you know, you could set them up so that it would be like a big wall, maybe like a 20 foot by 20 foot wall. And you have different panels on that wall, not touching all throughout. You could set it up, these up and then still configure your video wall in your control system to be able to put what images you want where. Uh, it's really, really handy, just showing other ways that you can use this. Um, I had another question come in is, um, Dolby Vision out of the Cloud9 or HDR? You would not be, no, if you went with the Cloud9, the Cloud9 is a 1080p product. So that multi-view section is just one way to use it, but you wouldn't be able to use it with Dolby Vision or um, uh, HDR content because the Cloud9 is uh, for bars and restaurants. It's going to give that 1080p instant switching. Great question. So this is the control software. Um, I'll kind of just give you guys a quick rundown. If you look at this um, image right here, let's look on the left-hand side. These are your three steps. So you hit connect, that just connects to the software or the software to the actual unit. So if you're connected through RS232, you're connected through LAN, you're, you're connected through, um, you know, however you get connected, you're able to hit, view our view that you're connected and then you move on you move on to the measure and the measures right here so what you see is you have each one of the displays you have different layouts so if you want to do a three by three you click this if you want to do two four by four video walls with one processor you do that if you want to just do one two by two i, I said four by four but i meant two by two four panel uh, if you want to do just one um dolby vision video wall i mean even though we have the cap four the Cap4 is not able to do Dolby Vision. So let's say you want to set up a, a really nice home theater and you're going to use OLED panels that do Dolby Vision and you're going to find the smallest bezel ones and these are um, from the store, but your customer wants a uh, video wall. The Cap4 would be great. You're going to be able to show great images, but you in those cases, you may want to jump to the Cap9. Even though you're not going to use all nine of the outputs, you're going to be actually be able to deliver that extra optimized content with Dolby Vision. 
Um, but you get it, you know, you type in what the bezel size is for the top, the sides, the bottom. Um, you can type in what type of TV it is and save these profiles for later um, if you use the same type of TV on, uh, on a normal basis. And then you can hit that um, generate video wall and bada bing, bada boom, you have that video wall. So these this this uh, fresco cap cap nine is a clearly a really really powerful piece engineered by our by our own engineers to um, really allow integrators to give their customers a major wow factor and when you use the fresco cap nine you you have that video wall processing in that cuts time on installation you deliver this huge wow factor that brings word of mouth for your integration company now you're he hearing getting more jobs you have to get more people and it grows the business getting you more income exactly what you want so uh, it's a great way to um, set yourself apart from your competitors and as john said the part is part of setting up the the cap nine is hanging the panels because it's such an easy software because it's so easy to set up you could sit you send entry level techs to set up these big, big video walls, making sure that your experienced techs are working on the next job or um, getting to go onto the next installation, keeping that company's hash, um, cash flow healthy by keeping the jobs constantly moving. Uh, another way to just keep that business um, safe and steady, you can help that by installing these products. And then set, your, set yourself apart with Dolby Vision. I mean, that's basically you are able to give your customers Dolby Vision. They will feel that you're giving them the best of the best, pushing technology further. That gives them security knowing that, hey, I got something nobody else has. My integrator is giving me the secret sauce, allowing me to do this thing. I'm so excited about it. Going to give you customers for life. And so by just... Um, utilizing the fresco and becoming an advocate for your customer becoming an advocate for increasing the um, impact and the wow factor of your customers um, installations you'll really um, find the benefits for the uh, fresco cap 9 we have a 10-year warranty that's with all of our products and it continues with this one um, we um, put these through the ringers uh, we have uh, our our tech support is next level they are there to help you. They will help you from start to finish. If you have any problems at all, let us know. We will get you get it taken care of. If you think that you're um, you have a problem with your product, we do advanced replacement um, services. So we will get a new one in your hand in those rare rare chances that you would need it. Oh, it looks like another question come came in here. Uh, so it's uh i have another one from jalen jalen i appreciate you jumping in on on this today because you had a really really a lot of good questions and i see this one is hey it already has land port any thoughts to add dante aes uh cc7 you know the networked audios um and there isn't anything right now to add networked audio at that time we would have to put in a different chipset in order to manage that into a networked audio system but av pro edge is working on a ton of really cool network to audio solutions that will be coming out in 2021. So Jalen, stick tight, make sure that you're um, checking out all our new product launches and we will definitely have um, more news for you along those lines. Unfortunately, with this Fresco piece, it's not going to have any of those network audio um, choices. And compatible products, we're going through a few of them. You can use our DAs, our multi-view or our cloud nine any of our HDMI matrix switches. If you really wanna push that Dolby Vision, you really wanna push that HDR, definitely make sure that you're using AV Pro Edge matrix switchers. That's the only way that you're gonna really ensure that you're getting the most optimized signal that you possibly can. And if you ever need any more information, um, don't hesitate to give us a call. Uh, you can go to the website right now um, and it is live, it's active, we'll go there. And this is up, see, so you can see, we got your resources, your gallery, you can get um, your specifications, go through your different applications that you wanted to see, how different ways to use it. Here's one we didn't look at, see, so you can do two two by two video walls out of the same source, you set that up in the control system, just another really cool way to use it. Um, but if not, guys, get your last questions in here. I am wrapping up. I thank you guys for joining me uh, so much today. Um, let's see here. David, uh, you had a question. Is the software available in a demo from the reps to use? Yes, it sure is. So if you go to resources right here, David, you would be able to get the PC software. You can pull that up right on your computer. 
you can click through it. Even if you're not connected, you can still see all the options of how it works. So that's a great point, David. Uh, um, I suggest you do that. And if anybody else uh, would like to do that, they sure can. Um, we will put this training out um, to the public. So if you have any colleagues or you want to share this within the next day or two, it will be on our, U or by Monday, it will be on our YouTube page. Um, and then if you guys have any questions about pricing, getting one in your hand, stocking, having an, uh, putting one in your own house, make sure you call our, your uh, regional sales manager um, right away today and they'll help you talk you through that. Our phone number, you can just call us at 605-274-6055 and we'll be able to help. Um, so let me just check the last the question, question box. Looks like a few came in here. So this is great, guys. Thank you. All right. Did you say when this is shipping? So let me check when this is shipping, uh, Jalen. It's shipping today. We have them in stock. We've actually had them in stock. But when we do a product launch, we need to make sure that it's going to work when it comes out the gate. So our testing um, people have been running it through the ringer. We actually have an OLED 4x4 video wall. That's so cool playing Dolby Vision in our lab. Um, so yes, uh, this is shipping right now. You could call today and get your order in. All right, Brian had a question. Uh, thanks for the pre presentation. No, thanks, Brian. I appreciate you joining us. Um, and can you do the fig without being connected? So you're saying configure the custom bezels without being connected to the um, to the to the processor. You are not able to. There's no buttons or anything on here that would allow you to actually you know check out what you're doing. But if you are just going up and you're putting three, three, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, your classic three by three, you don't have to do any configuring. If you plug it in, it will automatically be in that configuration for you. All right, great question, Shane. All right, that looks like that's about it. Thanks again for joining us today. I really appreciate you guys checking out the Fresco Cap9, the nine um, HDMI output video wall processor from AV Pro Edge. We have a bunch of new products coming out over the next month. In November, we have a cool seamless switching eight by eight. We have some cool rack mounting um, system for our extenders and our new upcoming AV over IP systems. And we have uh, some really cool uh, uh, super long AOC cables that I mentioned earlier that we'll be doing training on. So you can find all of that by just going to avproedge.com. Scroll down a little bit and you'll be able to see all our trainings where we're going to be. Um, reach out to your regional sales manager. If you have any questions, they can hook you up with the links to get involved with those trainings, or you can register right from our webpage. Um, but any other than that, thank you guys so much for tuning in today and I appreciate it. I will see you guys on our next product training and uh, I, I hope you call right away and order one of these Fresco Cap 9s. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you later.